Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazard of Chess channel and welcome back to our common chess games played by computer series. So in this series we're following some great games that have been played by top engines and today I've decided to show a really wild attacking game played by two top engines Stalker 15 and the Dragon Engine and the cool part about this game is that we'll see a beautiful martial gambit of the Semislav defense of the accelerated move order of the Semislav defense and this is really really wild I think it's a perfect opening for Stockfish uh, this is a gambit that I think many of us would not dare to play because it has so many wild lines uh, so many uh, ideas in an early stage of the game so be prepared this was simply a beautiful beautiful game from another dimension so let's see what happened stopper 15 against the dragon engine in the martial gambit so d4 was played by the fish we have uh, d5 by the dragon we have c4 e6 the queen's gambit declined and now we have knight to c3 which is of course the knight's variation now comes the tricky part already uh, we have now the move c6 which is now the accelerated move order of the semi-slav defense so notice uh black is playing the game without the move knight you have six and the fun part about this line for black is that actually if you are playing some ideas of maybe the exchange variation in my opinion is perfectly fine then uh, black will play simply e takes d5 and notice now that the bishop is coming out in a beautiful way so many times this bishop is paralyzed by its own pawn structure now it's getting out and uh, you can maybe develop in this way queen to c2 but now after bishop to d6 and knight you have three actually the cool part about this line is that black doesn't have to play knight to f6 that's the beauty when you delay the move knight to f6 so if you play knight to f6 then probably the game will lead into bishop to g5 pinning lines but now you can play some ideas of knight to e7 and after something like i don't know bishop to g5 or something the cool part is that why black will eventually in one moment play the beautiful bishop to f5 move and will kick away your queen from this very uh, very important diagonal so this is a uh, one of the ways to go so as i said this was our analysis after potential c takes d5 you could also play a normal developing move uh, here with the move knight to f3 seems also logically here makes really sense that we have now a two knights variation but now i think the fun part starts when you play the move d takes c4 the problem for white is now that white cannot get the pawn back because after move e3 black will uh, rely uh, here simply with the move um, the b5 will hang on to this pawn um, on c4 Four, and now you can even break through you can try to break the pawn chain but now with bishop to b4 notice after the uh, a takes b5 and c takes b5 you cannot take out with the knight because of the pin and um, black is having simply uh, one pawn more will eventually play a6 bishop to b7 knight to d7 knight to f6 kingside calcing our normal moves and here <coughs> in my opinion black should be slightly better so this is not working so that's why one of the most aggressive ways of um, the open Opening is uh, of course to play the move e4 but actually it becomes now a gambit it becomes now the so-called martial gambit the normal line would be something like e3 which is probably the best way here then to play bishop to d3 queen to c2 knight to f3 and similar stuff so but okay let's see now what happens after move e4 that stockfish played so now we have the martial gambit after move d takes e4 we have knight takes e4 but now after move bishop to b4 uh, the problem is now that you cannot uh, cover with your knight again back because you get the knowing move e5 look at this if you take d takes e5 then the queen takes d1 king to d1 and now i think we can even trade off here bishop takes c3 b takes c3 uh look at this all of these pawns are weaknesses so uh here uh you can even hang on to this position like this you can even play bishop to f5 uh maybe then develop here the knight so knight to c um knight to c5 knight to d3 so many so many opportunities you have so in my opinion here uh, black again should be slightly better so that's why after move um uh, bishop to b4 uh, you have to cover i think here uh, with the bishop a bishop to d2 was played but now uh, notice that the queen is not protecting the d pawn anymore so now black can play this move queen to d4 and we uh, have given up a pawn so that's why it's called the martial gambit so what is the compensation for the lost pawn whenever you play a gambit you have to have a compensation even if you play the king's gambit when you play the king's gambit with e4 you know uh, then e5 and f4 when your opponent 
takes then you have always the opportunity to grab the center you have the e4 pawn and then you have the d4 pawn you have at least the pawn central control for the lost pawn of course you have in the king's gambit an endangered king's position or something but what i mean about this you have to always have a, some kind of a compensation and in this position the compensation that you get is of course the endangered queen in the center of the board the queen gets more and more attacked so you we are getting extra time extra tempi against our opponent's queen because the queen got decoyed towards the center and now we will of course attack it but the other cool element is that after move bishop b4 uh, queen to e4 and bishop to e2 notice now that we have uh, prevented here black from castling so the king uh, black's king is stuck now in the center of the board so we have now two elements for the lost pawn we have now the endangered queen's position but also the endangered king's position so you should always have a compensation when you play gambits if you don't gain any compensation you're just giving up a pawn then it's not the gambit it's just stupid play so as i said after move bishop to e2 uh here black can of course immediately take out the pawn on g2 uh this wasn't played at the game but now again as we said we have a compensation bishop to f3 we're still kicking away the queen the queen is coming here on d6 we have now battery on dark square so uh very very uh, tricky part already so that's why here the continuation after move bishop to e2 here the dragon engine played a counter attack with the move c5 and after bishop to c5 what the dragon is hoping for to get an extra time against the bishop so after move knight to d7 we're getting an extra tempo against the bishop so here in continuation after bishop to c5 we have now queen takes g2 bishop to f3 anyway and you see now after move uh, here queen to c uh, queen to g5 attacking the bishop on c5 a stockfish played now a beautiful queen to d6 and it seems so that something went wrong already for for black but uh here the dragon engine defended in a beautiful way played now knight to d7 attacking now uh the bishop on c5 and now you see the f8 cover is covered the uh, score on e7 is covered if you try of course queen to e7 maybe uh, here in this position to trade off the queens immediately it's not so good because of this move uh, you can immediately play queen to d4 uh, queen to d7 is not working because of queen takes g7 so black i think in this position would love to trade off the queens if the queens are off the board then it should be much much better for black because the only uh, way to make something uh, to, uh, to happen in this game is when the queens are on the board or when you gain really a beautiful piece, piece activity with every piece but we have to notice now the knight is still not playing this rook is not playing this rook is so far not playing so we cannot really say that white is attacking this position with all of the pieces if the piece are included all of the pieces included into the game then maybe maybe we can trade off the queens and hope for the best but now so far uh trading off the queens would be too risky so that's why here knight to d7 was played by uh, the dragon engine uh trying to kick away this annoying bishop from this diagonal uh, here uh stock which stays of course on this diagonal plays bishop to a3 and now queen to a5 a check uh here you have to make a reaction uh, b4 is of course not working bishop to uh, b4 is all also risky because we'll simply play queen to a6 but now king to f1 and you see now the dragon engine also exposed a little bit the white king uh, the king is really on a natural square this is not a good square of course for white king but at least we can hide here on g2 maybe play the knight to e2 again rook to e1 rook to d1 including at least all of the pieces into the attack so here the continuation we have queen to e5 again this desperate try by the dragon engine to simplify the game by trading off the queens we have queen to d3 and now queen to c7 preparing now the move knight to e5 in the beginning it seemed to me that you have to prevent this move uh, knight to e5 you have to make a kind of counter attack maybe with rook to e1 it seemed risky to me to allow your opponent here to play the move knight to e5 but stockfish allowed it simply with the move rook to to d1 stockfish has of course its um, great calculation skills from this point on the game is becoming really really well so here the continuation knight to e5 was played uh, by uh, the drag engine and now a beautiful counter attack played by stockfish we have bishop to d6 so knight takes d3 we have bishop takes c7 and now knight to c5 here played by drag i was curious what is going to happen if you for instance play the move knight takes b2 it makes really made sense to me because also we have to know this the pawn on c4 was hanging this wasn't played in the game but was i was really thinking why didn't dragon 
take out the pawn on b2 here but actually look at this a rook to d8 is going to happen king to e7 and now black is getting paralyzed uh, here by this beautiful piece activity look at this how you can include the pieces into the game you just play knight to e2 you just sacrifice another pawn uh now black has to play e5 maybe just to somehow liberate uh this the, the light square bishop but now f move king to e1 you can even take out this one but now knight to c3 is threatening here the move knight to d5 or knight to b5 now you have to play knight to b6 uh just in order to cover your d5 square but now we can play knight to d5 anyway look at this knight takes d5 bishop to d5 and black is paralyzed this would be really the suggested line by top engines uh, this wasn't played in the game because as we said uh, the drag engine didn't play this move knight to b2 played knight to c5 but let's go back in this position after move bishop to d5 you cannot move the knight you cannot move uh, the pawn you cannot move the rook you cannot move the bishop every piece is paralyzed you cannot even move the king here uh so it's such a such a zugzwang position uh here uh, of white so here uh but white would paralyze all of the pieces of black really really wild stuff so that's why this move knight takes b2 doesn't make sense because you're giving your opponent simply too much time in order to include all of the pieces into the attack so as i said here uh knight to c5 was played in instead of knight takes b2 so knight to e7 uh played by stockfish simply developing the piece we have uh, bishop to d7 bishop to d6 attacking the knight rook to c8 and of course you don't want to play the game like this bishop to c5 rook to c5 okay after move bishop to b7 you gain this pawn but also you lose the pawn on c4 and in this position uh, black should be slightly better we'll play knight to f6 finally uh, maybe uh, play king to e7 then including this other rook into the game when that happens in my opinion the game is over so that's why after move uh, rook to c8 stockfish made uh, progress here with the move b4 we have knight to a4 uh, attacking now also the pawn on c4 so that's why c5 but now comes b6 and this was really really risky maybe a better idea is to play the, to play the move bishop to c6 but actually it's not working because um, there is a really cool line now that white could have played uh, this wasn't played again in the game but uh, i really wanted to show in my opinion bishop to c6 made more sense than this move than uh, that the, the drag engine played the move b6 but bishop to c6 is not working because of this line we play simply bishop to c6 rook to c6 and now rook to g1 we are attacking the pawn on g7 now you're protecting the pawn but now we play rook lift rook to g3 and rook to a3 and we will eventually grab all of these pawns maybe on the a file the knight is in danger when this rook is coming into the game notice the several dark squares dark square problems in front of the king so really really tricky line it would have been for sure so now we play just maybe knight to e7 we play rook uh, here uh with the rook knight to b2 attacking the rook but now we just take away all of the square for the knight and look at this the king uh, the knight cannot even uh, get trapped here so you have to be careful so uh rook to a6 maybe can be played we just play rook takes a6 now notice this is a passer so still still a risky position uh, here for for black so that's why this bishop to c6 is also not working as i said in the beginning it seemed to me that this was slightly better so b6 was played by uh the drag engine but now this is the line that bothers so black uh, now the rook gets trapped wherever you go even if you go here to d8 we'll play simply bishop to c7 we will eventually trap the rook so here the drag engine finally decided to develop the minor pieces and uh hope for the best here in this position so bishop to c8 uh bishop to c8 we have rook to g1 again including the piece into the game knight to f5 knight to d4 we have knight to b2 and notice now how actually stockfish uh trapped also this knight on b2 the knight on b2 cannot move uh, anywhere so it's really really wild after move knight to b2 we have knight to f5 uh, we have knight takes uh, d1 it seems again that uh, black is equalizing the game because uh, black finally took a rook but now stockfish played knight to g7 and where are you going with this uh, uh, with this uh, knight so you have to first react king to d7 but now after move bishop to e5 all of the squares 
for the knight are taken you cannot play knight to c3 you cannot play knight to b2 you cannot play knight to e3 uh if the knight is paralyzed the rook is a little bit endangered again uh, by uh, here the bishop's activity but also the rook's activity on the g file so it's basically game over uh here for the dragon engine we're now in move 28 uh already a messed up position for black so f6 was played kicking with the bishop uh stockfish stays on this diagonal uh here uh not allowing again the knight to come into the game if we play bishop to f6 then rook to f8 is coming with the tempo then at least black is hoping to get out with the piece somehow again this would be probably a better position for for white but still uh stockfish didn't want to risk sort of anything uh i'm not sure uh, can uh, stockfish play any risks but uh stockfish is playing basically the best evaluations but bishop to a1 is perfectly fine not allowing here any counterplay by black so we have now b takes c5 we have b5 passing through not allowing again uh, the pieces to get into the game really, really uh subtle moves here by stockfish we have e5 again uh the dragon engine is desperately trying to get the piece into the game we have king to e1 a6 we have b6 again the bishop is not coming out we have king to c6 and finally the knight is taking so we have rook to f8 rook to g3 king takes uh, b6 of course and now king to c1 uh white is up a pawn but uh, up a piece but still you have some worries because uh here maybe black has these two connected pawns also this pawn so uh black has two pawns for the lost piece but it's simply not enough because here from bishop to d7 bishop to b2 we have uh, a5 now the bishop is coming into the game all of these pawns are the dark square so of course they are an object of uh, the white's attack so we have here rook to f7 rook to b3 first to check now the knight is coming here on the edge of the board bishop to g4 and now the knight can be secured knight to g3 so bishop to e6 rook to uh, c3 now the pawn is hanging c4 you have to play bishop to b2 bishop to uh, d5 rook to a3 now this pawn is hanging uh, rook to b5 still you have to make of course uh, moves here you just cannot uh uh win the game immediately you have to play tiny little improvements you have to just slowly win the game but of course stockfish uh, when it evaluates the position like this then it's game over for its opponent so we have bishop to b7 rook to e3 uh rook to g7 rook to g3 hoping of course for a trace of rooks rook to f7 rook to g8 very nice move getting uh with the rook behind the pawns which is uh, of course perfectly fine you can attack all of these pawns all of the pieces here just from behind and include maybe then afterwards some minor pieces into the game so king to b6 bishop to a3 king to c7 rook to f8 now finally the pieces are traded off and finally the snake is coming into the game we have f5 bishop to c5 king to c7 a4 and now f move f4 in this position uh the drag engine resigns so as i said this is um simple chess we just include every piece we just play to uh, with our king towards the center uh here um as i said the, the engines decided to give it up hit here stockfish won the game with a beautiful beautiful performance so really wild stuff uh really wild uh martial gambit you see how um you can give up sometimes some pawns just in order to have a beautiful uh, compensation i think we saw here that the endangered queen and really the endangered king were really great compensation for white then eventually stockfish managed to somehow include all of the pieces into the attack in one moment i thought this is defendable for black but you see how stockfish is playing the game calculate basically everything all over the board really really great performance by the fish so okay i hope that you enjoyed the game i really really enjoyed it a lot if you see want to see more about the slav defense and especially about the martial gambit check out my uh, slav defense series and you can also check out the whole queen's game the client series here's the link of our playlist and if you want to see more stockfish and some other brutal top engine games check out my comments chess games play by computer series here's also the link and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what to say chess is the best of course